Okay. Hello. Now welcome to welcome, welcome, episode welcome. three of the Actual Nothing Podcast. I'm Aaron. That's JP. I'm JP. I think my mic is a little loud. I'm running uh, some... If running it's speaking and stuff. Yeah, I'm running whatever. some reds right now. Whatever. Whatever. We'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah, we'll see. We're testing everything. We're, we're trying new technology and with what little money we have to see if anything works, but... If you donate to the cause, we can we can sound a lot better <laughs> yeah. for you and the few people who are listening to this. Mm-hmm. No, actually, dude, like um, my friends that I've told about this, yeah. some of them are actually listening to it. How, how are they enjoying I, it? I think they like it. I don't yeah. know. Uh, I got a random text today from one of my friends that I think, I don't know what episode it was from, but yeah. he just sent me a text that said, uh, Johannes or Johannes Mirror. <laughs> and I was like, what? It sounded like a, like a, it looked like a butt text because I was like, Okay. This doesn't mean anything to me. And then he's like, your podcast. I was like, what about it? He's like, it's it's something that one of the topics that you're talking about. I was like, cool, you could have told me that before. But that means that people are listening. And um, when I put it on sound... Oh, by the way, we're on SoundCloud and iTunes now. So if you're listening to this... What's up, everyone? Find YouTube, us on iTunes. We're on, well, the SoundCloud is where I have to upload it, but it'll they get transferred over to iTunes because we got approved. So we that's are cool. approved for iTunes. Yeah. We made it. Um, but I did get... A, I got an email on our th- on our account that said, like, something network liked it. So somebody, somebody that's not somebody we're- that we know <laughs> actually is listening to us. Or maybe. We're, we're living the dream. Know. We're making it. We're going to live the dream. Yeah. Gonna be uh, podcast stars. The I think it's while well, I'm in the middle of editing episode two, the third episode, but episode two, I feel like we're gonna have Man, to keep that, reiterating that's, that's that. Really, that's really that something because we started episode zero as the first <laughs> one that we uploaded. Yeah, it's yeah. like really screwing with how I have to tell people with yeah. the order of it because I'm always like. The second episode is out, but that's episode one. Oh, uh, dude, I think so. I think we just gotta call it episode episode one, and then we'll just call the we'll call the pilot to the pilot exactly that. But I already put it as episode zero. I don't know if I can change the name of the thing. We'll just we'll it's just fine. we'll it's leave fine. it as episode zero. It's okay. Everyone sh- everyone will know that it's the pilot to the, the pilot. The quality though is definitely like. Well, the first episode was kind of bullshit because I just recorded it on my phone, which you, you know, but it didn't like, sound that bad. we just had to do it. Though. Yeah, we had to do it. No, but I think like uh, is episode two out yet at this point? Uh, no, it'll be out either tomorrow from when we're recording this or on Thursday. Um, I'm already done with my track, but I haven't decided because I think I lost Dan's file that I recorded on my phone originally. Oh, but <laughs> since Peter's picked up his. Peter's phone was like right next to him and Dan anyway. So it sounds pretty clear through them. And then yours is there too, but I haven't decided if I'm going to use your track or if I should just have yours because his Peter's phone picked up your voice too. So So Peter, so Peter's phone actually picks up mine like better than my own phone. Yeah. I don't know. Your phone, if you listen back to episode one, it sounded really like muffled and stuff, but that's, I think that's just like, I I wonder if it's because of my case actually. Maybe that could be a thing. You could probably like remove the case and maybe it'll be better. But once you get the other mic, then no, of it will matter and then you'll sound nice and yeah crispy like my voice yeah actually mm. whoa, that, that's what i want Sensual. a crispy crispy, <laughs> crispy. R- ridges lay voice <laughs> yeah um no i'm getting a new mic um actually so so of the of my friends who have watched it we actually have gotten some good reviews from them they've said that like you know the content is good it gets um, better, dude. This honestly, episode two, while I'm editing it, yeah. I was laughing while I was editing it because it it's, be it's fun. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I heard was like episode uh, the pilot of the pilot. You know, I think we knew this going into it. Just like the um, like all the content's good. Just we needed a little more like yeah. That, little, and we, little, were, we were pretty <laughs> drunk when we, when we did that one too. <laughs> I mean, like I kind of like that as the as our operating procedure for uh-huh. most of these. Although we're not drunk right now, yeah, yeah. which is a shame. But like. I gotta, dr- I, I, gotta, I gotta drive in the morning, yeah. so like it's fine. But um, no, no, it, it's it's good. We're what I've heard is you guys are interesting, and that that for me works. That, yeah, that's, right? that's like, nice. I, I'm glad to know that I'm an interesting person. I mean, you know how we talked last week, or in what will be episode two about 
love languages and yeah. i was like you know what words of affirmation don't mean that much sometimes they're pretty nice <laughs> sometimes when, when people tell me that they're i don't have a completely annoying voice and sometimes they like listening to what we talk about or what i talk about that's all right i'm okay with that <laughs> just just yeah yeah so so for everyone who's listened to episode who will listen to episode two words of affirmation good for us yeah we're cool with that keep keep sending us your words of affirmation <laughs> that's our that's Be, ours and your love language. Feed our egos yeah please but it's nice because I've been, I have, like you've been getting feedback. I've been getting feedback from some of my friends and the whole iTunes thing. Yeah. Like as soon as you brought that up the same day, some, one of my other friends told me, I was like, put it on iTunes so I can listen into it while I'm on my runs. I was like, I, I right. love the, I love the whole idea of getting approved for iTunes. I, I feel like we've, we've gotten over a huge hurdle. Yeah. Now. Well, like, I had to jump through so many hoops to find out how to put it on there. Just really? cause kind of, I had to find a website to upload everything. Granted. Unless we pay for the full, uh, like SoundCloud Pro or whatever that unli- like gives you unlimited hosting, um, I think it's limited to like four hours of uploads a month or something like that. Okay. But unless we don't record that much, then it won't be an issue. But uh, I don't know. Next month, I might put it down in case these episodes get like a little bit long. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how much is it to like for the premium? I think it's like ten bucks or something oh, like that. Man. So it's not bad. That's also right. Yeah. We could like so we could split that. Yeah. So, uh, and speaking of uh. Speaking of uh, feedback, we should definitely go to that question your friend put up. Um, well, who was your friend who, who asked us that question of what's the uh, the best, worst superhero ability? Oh, it's Ryan. Ryan asked us to talk about uh, shitty superhero powers. Okay. Okay. I still think that the one we found earlier today, we found one <laughs> on an SCP, uh, an SCP. Um, what, what, what is, what is, wait, hold on. Before you go into that, what? Our SCPs, JP. Uh, SCP. For people who don't know. SCP is this foundation um, that was created. It's a huge sort of fan fiction foundation about these uh, entities that are sort of supernatural. Mm-hmm. And this uh, this company, SCP, stands for Secure, Contain, and Protect. They collect these things and they figure out procedural uh, ways to contain these sort of dangerous or otherwise otherworldly things. And so, like, you get you get instances of. Uh, well, what happens is people will write out these SCP uh, entries and they get put up to a bunch of people who own the site and they will like, you know, they'll see whether or not it's a good, it's good enough fit for the website and they'll put it up. So for instance, you get one that's like, uh, I forget what number it is, but it's like half of a cat. <laughs> and so they have a whole entry for like, it's a Josie the half cat, you know, that's, that's literally a really half one. of a cat. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had, we had stumbled on this, onto this one that was a, uh, it was a giant catapult, and basically, <laughs> it, it describes it's being described as like um, a big catapult for when you find something like from back in like the 15th century when you find something weird and you don't like it, you just make a huge catapult and you send it into the sun. And so, <laughs> one of the, the second example of what they sent was like a, a regular man who. Although invulnerable, still felt pain. And so they sent this thing. It's like the shittiest thing ever. <laughs> so they sent this guy into the sun. So I think that that for me tops my list of like the worst, the, the best worst superpower. Just like being invulnerable but still feeling pain. It's like it's like a, a it's like Deadpool without <laughs> any of the acrobatic ability he has. You're a completely yeah, normal person, but you don't die. Like, it's like you or me, just like completely normal otherwise. But like you, you can't. You're invulnerable. Like, like you walk around the corner and stub your toe on a wall, and you're just like, ah, shit. <laughs> and like you don't have any physical damage, but it just still hurts I, as if you actually did take I the think damage. It's, I, I think just like throwing that into the sun just really uh, makes it something else. Uh, that that SCP. I'm gonna find it really quickly for such everyone a dumb here. One. We're gonna have an episode <laughs> dedicated to our favorite SCPs too. Coming uh, coming to you next week. Um, but for this, oh yeah, wait. Before we go into this week's topic, what's your number one my, worst I've, I've told, superhero? I've told multiple people about this, but my fa- i don't remember if I stole this from somebody or not. But my favorite shitty superhero power is um, inv- invulnerability to every third bullet. <laughs> so <laughs> you only you only have to take the first two bullets, but you know the the third one, you're. You're scot free. You're good. So maybe <laughs> somebody who is cursed with this superpower, they could shoot themselves in the foot twice, 
And then next time they're robbed, they'll be like, what are you going to do? Shoot me? And then the guy <laughs> unloads bullets four and five into his head and it doesn't matter it kinda, anymore. It kind of reminds me of a, you ever see that meme that's like, uh, what are you going to do? Stab me? Stab me. <laughs> man, man who, who was got stabbed. stabbed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or it's like, like the clown who's like, this hasn't been, or this isn't my first rodeo. And then in the <laughs> newspaper, clown dies in yeah. first rodeo. <laughs> that was also really good. Uh, but I, I, I spent like a whole like day or shout in the shower thinking about you spent a whole day shitty in the shower. Su- yeah. Oh my god. I almost died, but I was thinking about other shitty superhero powers while I was in there. Is like the the ability to make everything you touch slightly moist. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> that's that's another like. Pointless how about, superpower. How, how about this one? How about the uh, the ability to walk into your, walk into your house and all of your home decor is done differently? <laughs> I saw another one that was like um the or one of my other friends that I was talking to about this was like the ability to tell the future after it happened. God, that's so <laughs> stupid. Isn't that normal? Isn't yeah. that just like <laughs> just living life? Yeah, you, you can tell people you do that right now. Yeah, you know like. Like oh, you know, I can tell the future after it happens. After it happens, my hindsight's always twenty yeah. twenty thirty. Or like the ability to breathe out of only one nostril. See, that's not an ability; that's a disability. <laughs> that's, that was something I want to talk about before we got into this because, like, there's definitely abilities, but then there's also like disabilities. <laughs> yeah. So right? what's what's the point when like something turns into a disability? Yeah, it's it's like it's the, uh, that's the same as saying like oh, you, your abilities you've got one big nostril instead of two nostrils. But what if you turn it? A disability into an ability, like um. God, that makes you an optimist. Like a uh, daredevil, he's blind, but he can. He's a superhero. Yeah, but blind his superhero. ability is he's got that sense of. Is he's got that hearing, right? The hearing is everything about. Oh, him, that's true. Right, it's it like how for it. it's like how Toph from Avatar: The Last Airbender, like. Oh yeah, she she, like see. she she's like she's blind, but she's got that sense. You know, from her feet yeah. and the vibrations. Size makes sense. So it's kind of like it's kind of like making the most of it. It's still it's an ability because yeah. you train it, right? Is well, I think that's a thing in real life. It's like if you lose one of your senses, your body makes up for it by strengthening your other senses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not willing to try to find out. So no. And every time I get asked that question of like, if you could lose either your sense of like sight or like hearing, you know, it, it's like, it doesn't make it easier knowing that like one of them gets better. Like if you lose the I one. I think if I had to lose one of the five senses, it would be taste. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know if I want that, man. Well, I mean, taste and smell are half the thing. Oh, uh, hmm. maybe I lose smell before taste. Really? But then smell, I think, smell is, is like fifty linked- percent of taste, right? Yeah, but also smell is like linked to your memories really strong, like strongly as well. Like you ever oh, go, you ever go into a room and you true. smell something and you're just like taken back. There, there's this um, it's such a weird one, but there's this cherry blossom hand soap. Yeah. That every no time way. I smell no it, no way. I think I know. Every time about. I smell it, I, it reminds me of League of Legends. For really? t- yeah, I don't weird. know why. I guess like when I was first playing the game. Or when I was playing it for a significant amount of time, that I washed my hands with that hand soap. But every time I smell it, I'm just like, "That's League." You see, I you see, I would have expected something a little more romantic, like you, like that was like the scent of like the girl you first had a crush <laughs> on. Like, no, dude, remember we already talked. I'm single as shit, so I don't have any, I don't have anything to latch onto those memories yet. Try it. Hold on, I think. Uh, uh, no, we're no, good. We're fine. good. We're good. You can leave it. We are. We are working. If you need with, to untangle it so that the thing is longer. No, nah, we're good. We're working with some new audio tech yeah, this week. My mic that I bought for like twenty bucks. Hey, but we're trying to vastly improve your experience as the yes. listener. So hopefully, this, plus this it really makes works out my job editing it easier and better to listen to. Yeah, so really, it's more of a convenience thing for us. Yeah. We don't care about you that much. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Fuck off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> Yeah, wait, no, no, please keep listening to us. We want to stay approved for Apple. Yeah, actually, I don't know what their criteria for that was. It was just like, give us your RSS feed, and then it said approval will take like three to ten days, but it happened the day after. So I was, was going like, to say, okay. I'm not, I'm not imagining there's a board of people who are listening to every single thing to come on to, uh, you know, podcasts. That would be sick. It's just a board of people that are just like, Look at these losers, they're trying to make something of their life. <laughs> I think approved. I think, I think if I could be on that board, I'd be down with that. To just listen, to listen, listen, to, listen to the first fruits of people's like, you know, people's projects come to yeah. fruition. I, you know, you know, like. I've always wanted to find like these really, really odd podcasts, you know, that come out, you yeah. know, like, you know, like the really underground ones like this one right now, like, mm-hmm. you know, people just doing things, maybe they've got ideas, but like, they don't know how to execute. Like, I think that'd oh, be... But then those kind of suck because it's like, they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Like, I mean, like all the millions and billions of people who 
or like I could be a let's player, but then they put out a video where it's them like not saying anything for twenty minutes. <laughs> oh, I was like, you're missing the entire point <laughs> of a let's play. <laughs> See, like for us, I don't want to sound like narcissistic or something, but I think we have a good grasp on how conversation works. So that's why this podcast thing, like, I, is I it mean, going? I mean, I think we're funny. Yeah, I think we're fun and we're interesting. I think to I'm listen cool. To. I think I'm hip. You know, according to the people, the, the either one or two people who told me that we're interesting. I saw I, eight, I want, I'll I saw take- eight views on. On episode one. Dude, I will take that. I will take that. It'll, it'll like last a whole month for me. But you know what I mean? Like we get it. Yeah. And we're not totally clueless. Like it's not like we're naturally quiet people who like don't even talk to each other and then like flipped on a record button. And do, you, we're like, do you remember that one episode of Strong Bad Email where like he runs the radio show? <laughs> it's like <laughs> dead air. Um, dead air. Dead air. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like that's what a lot of people kind of have to go through. Oh, man. For, um, their artistic ventures. I suppose. So there's like a a good quote by uh, one of the Let's Player channels that I like to watch, Game Grumps. This is accredited to uh, Dan Avidan, but he said, you have to go through the shitty artistic stuff in your life to get to the good stuff. And I mean, as a musician, right? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure I mean, like, I mean, I'm kind you didn't play Mozart out of nowhere, right? You had to no, practice had to, to get there. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's the same with like your projects too. Like mm-hmm. you're doing a lot of stuff like, that you don't necessarily want to do just now. I mean, you're trying to like get through a lot of different things and like trying to figure out like how to fund your personal projects and like all the little steps you got to take to get into your bigger projects. And I mean, like, I, you know, and like kudos to anybody who's doing that. It's a really tough road. Like yeah. it's hard to stay encouraged the entire time because there's a lot of instances where it's like you see all of these really big, like these podcasters who's made it and it's like, seeing these people who've just made it through all, like these weird odds and cut circumstance. And you're kind of just like, you know, I don't know if I'll ever make that. Like, yeah. the, like my, my project is so small and so meaningless like, as everything else is that, you know, like, how am I going to, how am I supposed to get to that amount of notoriety mm-hmm. and questioning, like, do I matter that much to where people are going to want to listen to that or want to like consume that sort of art? It, it's a, it's a, it's like a, a serpentine sort of road. So, I mean, like, I mean, it, it's definitely like, He's definitely right. You have to get through your artistic initial phase and you have to get through like all the all the craft of like honing the skill and like making it better through like uh, making it better through like failing yeah. or through like experiences that weren't prime for you. So, I mean, like, I mean, that, that's kind of like I think if we're going to if we're going to label any part of our podcast experience that I think episode zero was our artistic first step <laughs> yeah right but i mean like even this now i mean if this continues on for who knows how long and i'm sure there will be a stark difference in if we get to say episode like 50 looking back on this we'll be like man i could have done this better or yeah but this i mean wasn't that's, that good that's always a good thing to look back on and you know and the fact that it's recorded and we can listen to it is actually great yeah we can figure out the, the we can figure out the weak parts about it and then just go back and tweak you know I even think coming from episode, this is going to be our, this is our official episode three. Yeah. Coming from our official episode three from the original is actually a huge step forward. You know, like I feel, I mean, from a personal standpoint, I feel just so much more uh, relaxed than I did in the first one. Now that it's on the ground and we kind of, like you said, there was, there was a part in, I think episode one that you were like, as soon as we get it going, like it will just be smooth sailing. And for the most part, yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. And it's, it's really getting there. And I think, I think, um having the last episode with a few more people really like amped up our, uh, it really amped up our conversational skill as oh, well, yeah. you know, and I, you know, I well, definitely welcome anybody who wants to be on the show. That's um one of the points. I mean, I've talked to you before about how I pay attention to how people have conversations and, yeah. and that type of thing. And um, it's definitely easier to develop conversation between three people than two people, I think. Yeah. Because as a third person, who doesn't have to be involved in the conversation between two people. Yeah. You can wait and cherry pick for certain topics in the conversation that those other two people are having. Yeah. And then you can chime in. It's not like you have to within like two people, you and me, yeah. how we just have to play off of each other and we can't be uh, an outside that's just watching until you get a chance to join in on the conversation. Yeah. And I mean, like we're fortunate to have, we're fortunate to be having like, we already have a really like solid relationship. where like playing off of each other is like pretty natural. But definitely, like, having that third person, I, I definitely see it in situations where I'm not as comfortable. Mm. You know, where, like, you're with 
someone that you're acquainted with and maybe you're not super familiar with, but like having that third person who's able to just like wait and sort of, uh, who's able to wait and listen for little things that they can latch onto. Having that break in conversation between certain people is nice, actually. You know, because like like talking for an entire amount of time, especially with someone you're not totally familiar with, That's true. you can be kind of, it's almost like risking a bit because you're risking like how much you really know and like trying to, sh- trying to like jockey for position and mm-hmm. see like, you know, see how you fare up against this person's personality, you Ooh. know? That's yeah. like some like what you just said. That's some of the stuff that I look forward at when I was like taking people on dates, just yeah. to, like you know, just casual lunch, and yeah. when I was having one on one conversations. But yeah, that's like what you said was a huge part. Is like kind of measuring up how you are in respect to them. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. It, it's really an interesting thing to look at conversation. Like if you were in a conversation and you sort of tr- you take yourself out of it for a minute to look at it like from a third person point of view, you kind of see like a you see like two people like jockeying for position as mm-hmm. I like to call it. It's like, uh, or, um, I don't like to call it saber rattling because that, that oh, sort of, bless in- you. <laughs> what is it? You know, saber rattling? S- saber rattling. Saber rattling. Sa- saber rattling, you know, it, it refers to like, um, I normally hear it in terms of like military prowess where like certain governments and, and nations will, will do like, they'll do what, all of these formations and they'll do practice or whatever, like out on the open so that people can film it and it gets traction on the international media Mm -hmm. and and it just shows strength and numbers and it shows how well-trained everyone is. That's like saber rattling. Or, you know, like when, um, when Kim Jong-un, like back when he was like testing all of his nuclear shit, um, you know, not too long ago. And like, they had all of the, uh, they had the army out doing drills. Like that's saber rattling. Oh, okay. And it's just so like, like kind of showing off. off for the yeah, public. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean like to take that down a whole lot, you know, to say like conversational saber rattling, it's kind of like, you know, y- you show off a little bit, especially when you just meet someone and-, and uh, First impressions, right? First impressions. And you're definitely just trying to like feel out where you fit into their conversational like, uh, like spectrum. Right. And it's really a, it's such a cool thing to see because like sometimes when you, when you connect with someone really well, you don't really have to, uh, you're not crafting anything. And I mean, sometimes I'm guilty of that where like I'll, I'll craft conversation as I'm, as I'm having it. Like I'll be thinking well in advance of what I want to talk about during the conversation so that I know there's not going to be a lull, you know, and it's, uh, it's sort of like a, a practice, a, a conversational practice that I've picked up over the years. I think that's a valuable skill, though, especially if the other person that you're talking to doesn't necessarily, you know, give 100% into their conversation right away. Yeah, yeah. Because if you can, that's actually something that I practiced, too, when I was having, like, one-on-one conversations with friends or on dates or whatever, where if, like you said, if you felt like a lull would be coming or if you weren't entirely sure where to take the conversation, if you take that little bit of time to plan ahead of it, yeah. you can just keep it going. And like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, People, and the other party will appreciate it. I'm sure. Yeah. And, and, and that's just like, you know, another part about that is like, uh, any sort of like conversational planning or like trying to do things while conversation is happening, happening, or even using conversation as like practice for more conversation. Like, you know, for anyone who's like, considering doing that or does that regularly it's a really great option to like take for yourself especially coming from like me especially uh i used you know i was always really uncomfortable with like one-on-one situations and it was always like really awkward and so like by practicing that conversation ability you you allow yourself like that space to get better at it because conversation like any skill is practiced yeah you know you can get good at it you can get really you you can learn how to read certain people's disinterest and disinterest and like play that into the conversation and, and like you know it doesn't really it doesn't make you surfacey it doesn't make you fake or anything it just makes you like a better conversationalist mm-hmm. right and better at like making people feel welcome yeah if that's if, if that's the motive you keep right yeah it kind of does boil down to what your motive behind the conversation yeah. is where like having a conversation for the purpose of a date is way different than having a conversation for I'm at a new club and I kind of just want to meet people for fun. Yeah, right, right. So like situational motivation is always there. But, you know, in practice, if if everything you do is to make the other person feel comfortable, then like all of that conversational practice is super useful. Yeah. You know, and part of it's not like I studied this, but when I was even now to this day, when I look into how conversation works a little bit more, um, I did a little bit of searching. I think 
generally there are three types of phrases that go into conversations. Um, one of them is making a statement. So that's just like the weather outside is nice. Declarative. Right? Um, yeah, declarative statement. The second one was asking a question, which is by far the easiest way to keep a conversation going. Yeah, right? yeah, because you're putting you're putting the ball in the other person's court. Yeah. Um, and then I think the third one was the answer to the question. Mm. Um, not not exactly in the same vein as making a statement because it's a response rather than just telling a story. Yeah. Um, but those I think I could be misremembering those, but those are like the three cruxes of uh, of a conversation and ever since I learned that anytime I have one-on-one conversations or even like if it's at a group dynamic and I'm still listening to how other people are talking and you know I'm that third party who's waiting to chime in on a topic that I want to talk about um, I kind of analyze how that works in day-to-day conversation and it's just really interesting to see like since it's not just stream of consciousness which happens from time to time but even that you can still dissect it into the parts where this person made a statement. Oh, this person made a question so that the conversation will keep going. And that like, it's just very interesting stuff to look into, which I think helps. There's, I honestly don't think there's a downside to becoming a better conversationalist. No, absolutely not. I think that like, you know, using those, using those sort of things uh, or like titles as a way to break down conversations and then sort of try and understand how you do conversations is like, it's a perfect way to practice Yeah, because it takes the, it takes the fear out of having a conversation, the sort of like anomalous fear of like, what is happening in this situation? Like, you know, I I don't know how to handle it because so many things could or couldn't happen. And that's like a, that's a, that's a very valid fear to have. Um, Public speaking is like the biggest fear I think that everyone has. Right. I mean, public public speaking is terrifying. Yeah, it is scary. Getting up there and having to like present yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a really vulnerable spot, like spot to make, uh, to put yourself in. Yeah, you don't want to screw up. Especially in a spot where you're like public speaking is more declarative than anything. Yeah. You know, you're not trying to, you're not having a conversation. You're almost giving information and giving, you're presenting yourself in such a way. But I really like, um, so actually that whole, those three like, cruxes of a uh, of conversation is like it's really interesting because i had never really thought about it before but it makes a lot of sense yeah. mm-hmm. the in, the uh interrogative part of it is actually where where i build a lot of my conversational skill and where i where i tried to practice the most because uh, by opening up conversation um in a way that makes them feel comfortable and gets them to talk about their passions you sort of uh you get to a deeper level of like of relationship building at that point, especially because who doesn't want to talk about their passions? Yeah. So, so part of, part of how I, how I talked and how I practiced speaking with other people was like trying to figure out what their passions were and trying to ask questions about what they were most interested in. So, and then they inevitably felt more comfortable speaking with me and I, I knew something about them that made them happier. Mm -hmm. And so like, one of my, the favorite that I have right now with asking a question for conversation is what are you listening to? And that's such an, that's, I was thinking about this and I was wondering like, you know, I'm always interested in what people, at what everyone's listening to. I want to know like what the spread is for like, what my, are you listening to what I'm nowadays? Listening to right now? I'll give you an answer for that in a second, okay. but I want to explain generally like, you know, if in the conversational situations, we all like to ask like, uh, like what type of music are you into? Mm-hmm. And that's such a big blanket statement. And it's, it's really hard to answer that because like people can be into like multiple types of music, you know, like I'm into, I'm into like lots of classical music. I'm into jazz mm-hmm. and into like prog metal, like whatever you name it. I am into it. I yep. like most things, but like, if you ask the question, what are you listening to right now? It's sort of, uh, it sort of begs them to like show, uh, to like show and tell what they're listening to maybe what bands interest them the most. And then also it, 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 it assumes why, you know, it assumes that you're asking, why are you listening to this? Like, why, why do you pick this space right now to listen to it? And it's a much more probing question than what music do you like? That's true. Because that, the, what music do you like is such a surface level question where people are ready to dole out an answer for that. But what music are you listening to right now is so relevant to their like waking life at the moment. So like, you, you know, if you, if you ask me like what I'm listening to right now, it makes me think about, you know, uh, if I go into my car and I'm taking a drive somewhere, what do I listen to? Or if I'm taking a walk or if I'm with myself, what am I going to listen to right now? You know? Um, and so I think like that's such a great conversation starter or such a great way to get into conversation with someone you want to speak to or someone like you want to like uh, some like friend you want to know more about, you know, and, I'll, and I use it. I use it a lot for my uh, for professors, too. Like 
Um, I, I generally love to hear like what my prof- what my professors are listening to because you know most of the, like being a musician, most of my professors are music- musicians as well, mm-hmm. and so like their um, their listening preferences are like I use them to guide my own listening preferences to things that are like I haven't heard before or like types of music that I think that I haven't discovered yet. And so like, I I think like, especially with professionals and with like, you know, um, older people, it's really, everyone really, what are you listening to is such a great question. I'm going to start using that. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Same with, you know, you can use it for anything too. Like, um, like what books have you been reading? Do you read like what books have you read lately? Or like, Stuff like that. Anything, anything that like anything that focuses on like what they do regularly or what they like, making them think about what they what they like to do in their spare time rather than a surface question like what type of books or what type of music or what type of food because those are so like they're ready answers and they're they're not they don't really probe too much. It's just like if you think about it as like a chess thing, you know, they answer the question, that's it. Right. Yeah, you know? and they're they're making the, like almost going back to the three crux. Uh, Vol- or <laughs> what's the what's the what is the uh plural for crux is it cruxes or is it cruxes crux Cruxin. crux plural hold on i'm looking it up for this uh, it's, it's gonna a, bother me if i don't get it's it it's a herd of a herd of cruxes um but yeah going back to the three uh cruxes <laughs> going back to those um three things for conversation like you said when people give just that surface level answer it is sort of a cop out and it feels more like they're making a statement rather than answering the question, right? Like that almost is a sign of maybe not necessarily that they don't want to talk to you, but maybe the person that you're talking to and trying to go into having a better conversation isn't quite yet comfortable. And that opening question that you gave, what are you listening to? I feel like, yes, it will do a very good job at opening up the other person to start talking. And then once they get to a level where they feel comfortable, maybe they can start putting the ball in your court instead yeah. of theirs. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then that's when like conversation really starts to take off. And then once you feel comfortable around each other, then, Hey, you've made a friend. So yeah. And, and, and that sort of, and that sort of relationship building is like really great because it's, it's really pure. At least for me, I've always felt it's been really pure because I love to know what people are listening to. And they, they get like, whenever I've asked the question, I've always found people really excited or enthusiastic about their, about their listening preferences. You know, it's almost, it's almost as if like they haven't, but their person, like, but a personality will beg the question of what am I listening to? You know? That's nice. Um, so like, but what if they're deaf? What if they're deaf? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, they, looking, they, what are you looking at? What are you, what are you <laughs> reading Braille of? Is that, I, isn't Braille like dying now? Isn't that like going uh, away? Braille is for the blind. I, oh my God, I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh, it's like, tw- <laughs> what are you, what, what are you reading? Fuck, I'm going to, okay. Oh, another thing Ryan yeah. <laughs> brought to my attention from episode one. What? That were, or episode zero that were like, I asked. Who is the guy from World War One who said the British are coming? And you're like Paul Revere. That's not, that's not World War One. Yeah. That was the Revolutionary War. So uh, if that is any indication of my prowess in history hey, and man. general working mind, um, yeah, I'm, hey, man, time, I'm a fool. Time, time on a large scale is is like this. It's a spec. So. Hey man, all of the wars like kind of mush mash together for me sometimes. Really? Sometimes, wow. well, World War Two is super outstanding, but like for whatever reason, I was like Paul Revere, World, well, World War One, hundred, a hundred and like twenty year gap for you. I, I don't know. I feel like people you know way like, more about World War Two than the, World War the One. Entire nineteenth century, nothing <laughs> happens there. Uh, Paul Revere is a is a is a century Paul, skipping. Like, <laughs> he's a time demigod. traveler. Yeah, yeah, Paul Revere will help us in World War Three. He'll tell us that <laughs> he's there for every um, century's like the first war of yeah. every century. Paul Revere's coming the back. The aliens babies. are coming. <laughs> but where yeah, we're the texts are let's, coming. Let's go back to what you were going to answer. What What have you been listening to? What recently? have I been listening to lately? I'm glad you've asked that. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> tell me more. Let's become friends. What I've God maybe not, dude. <laughs> what I've been listening to lately? I've been listening to a lot of oh, actually. So I, I found a bunch of new things to listen to, and so Ooh. um I'll, I'll wrap some of these new guys that I've really liked. I've been listening. I listened to today. Um, it's called Pelagial by the, by a band called The Ocean. The and, Ocean. Um, it, it's it's a just disclaimer. It's a metal. It's a metal album for sure. It's a uh, but it's about it, it's about like the um, 
this like the sort of uh depths of the ocean and the levels of the ocean it's really cool they've got like uh, the they, song or like all of their well, music the, the entire album is about the ocean and about the levels of the ocean what you find like the like the first song is the epipelagic you've got the mesopelagic the bathy bathyapelagic you know it, it's a what? great it's really cool it's a great um it's not as technical as i'm used to with like uh some prog rock or some prog metal like I really like the weird mathy stuff, but mm-hmm. like this is it's really enjoyable. Um, the music is so well produced and like I really like the concept of this entire album. I'll give it a listen. Um, another one that I've listened to recently, um, The Color Spectrum by The Deer Hunter. Uh, it's, it's from 2011. They're an alternative group and they it's 36 tracks and every four tracks is a different color. It's really, really Ooh, cool. I, I, I Dude, I love it when like artists make their albums have like a story behind it or yeah, like how yeah. one song yeah, kind of rolls like into big another concept one concept albums yeah. yeah no me too man zed, no. zed did something like that recently with what one of it? his i don't remember what the album name is but some of the songs that i found on youtube it's like the the song will end kind of weird yeah but in the next song in the playlist it's the beginning of that next song oh nice so it just like seamlessly rolls through yeah. if you just had it all I, on I, one I, track i love that though. that but stuff that, is so cool and i mean like to, to, to go into a tangent and this is the power of that question you get into these nice tangents yeah um some of the nice things about um, musicians is um, you can, if you listen to their music, I, I really believe in the the power of an album played um, in its entirety without skipping, you know, just having it play all together and having that be its own like self-respected piece of art, you know, because like there's a reason I, I always feel like art, artists do everything with purpose. And if you play, if you're listening to an album, it's only correct that you listen to the whole album through. The way that the way that they programmed it, because of because they had to select it in that order for some specific reason, right? Mm-hmm. You know, there has to be some. There doesn't have to be narrative, but like the the sort of assumed narrative is that because they're artists and because they because they make the music, they should be picking it out. You know, without random. You know, that's a good point. Yeah, I feel so, like, oh sorry, oh, sorry, Steve, go ahead. No, no, sorry oh, yeah. Um, I just one of the things that I've kind of been not reading on, but been seeing around recently is um with how people can kind of buy single songs on yeah. iTunes or listen to single songs on Spotify or what have you, whatever service you're using. I've been seeing some people say that the buying of like CDs and albums all together is sort of, I wouldn't say dying out, but oh, dude, not nearly as popular as I, it was before. You know, I would say it's dying. I mean, with the exception of vinyl, which came back, um, you know, actually, they, I, I don't think CDs are sold um, commercially anymore. Not not really? um, not in stores at least. I think uh, Best Buy, uh, Best Buy, and a bunch of other like large distributors they stopped selling them as of the end of June. Really? Yeah, yeah. This the death of the CD is upon everyone. So now, right now. everything is just all digital. Yeah, streaming is where it's at. And I mean, like digital streams are really pop, like have been popular for like a yep. decade though. And so I mean, it wasn't it, it wasn't um, like un unsurprised or it wasn't surprising for that to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Like that uh everyone just moves to the internet now especially when you've got spotify and you got apple music that doesn't necessarily require you to have it on your phone you just stream it now you know that's it's, true it's such a you know the non-committal relation like uh, aspect of that is really important just because like you don't have to have the music on your phone in order for it to be there you just have to like have access to like data or the internet I'm, right for me personally i haven't bought a whole album in a very long time yeah um i do buy songs every now and then if i really like the band and try to support them yeah but i think part of why i like buying or getting these individual songs instead of using i because i don't really use spotify um you know i mostly use youtube when i try to find my music but like i'll put things into a playlist or i'll get links to them and then download them if i can but it's kind of like a like a collection thing for me it's like I like having them having a library that I know that I built myself yeah. as opposed to relying on whatever computer algorithm Spotify decided that they're like, hey, you might like this one. I mean, that can certainly be a great thing for finding yeah. new music that you might not have heard or maybe it, there'll be a song that you forgot about and then it reminds you because it just happened to play by chance. But for me, and I think a lot of people would who still buy songs and albums would agree that the collection aspect of it is huge for them. Like that's especially true for uh, people who collect vinyl. One of my friends is huge in collecting vinyl. And I know that one of the things he says, is like just like building a treasure collection and yeah. like just having maybe not necessarily the physical copies of it. Um, like vinyl does is the main part about it, but having a record of the song anywhere that, you know, that you went out 
and seek for yourself yeah. is part of what's fun. And that's kind of what I like to do. Like I have huge playlists of things that I've hunted down and that's just uh, the collection aspect of it is was I, fun I, for I me. I think that was special about music, especially it was more special or at least it had a better like potential for being special back in the day because like you had to go out and find these things. And sometimes like even if you only liked one song, it took you had to buy the whole album. And yeah. I remember one of my professors was talking about, you know, back in the day when he was listening to music, you know, sometimes you'd only have enough money to buy, to buy like two albums. And you'd listen to that album over and over because that's all you had. And you were finding things. And, but in the process, you amassed a huge collection of like your own music that sort of uh, that sort of ran like it ran like sort of parallel to your personality and how your personality mm. developed in music. It's a really cool like way of thinking about it. And I've always I have always enjoyed the aspect of hunting down something like you said and, and making it part of a collection that you sought out, you know, yeah. willfully. I um, think also um, when at those times when people had to buy whole albums, I think I won't say that songs became popular because people were forced to listen to it but say for example you bought an album to listen to it for only one song and you ended up listening through the whole album maybe there's a chance that you end up liking a song that you didn't initially like but because you had the whole small album available to you and you ended up listening to it over and over again you sort of warmed up to it like there's a handful of songs where at first i listened to it and i was like "Eh, i'm not really feeling it but after I was exposed to it a bunch of times or I gave it a second chance. I was like, you know, it's actually like not that bad. And I think albums are a great segue into, you know, revealing a song in an artist that you do like, but maybe not as big of their uh, number one hit that is played on the radio all the time. Yeah. Like, I, I also I'm sort of against the whole like it's it's hard to judge. Uh, it's hard to judge a band or an artist by the by their number one hit. You know, it's it's like. Um, I mean, they're one-hit wonders, right? Yeah, yeah, but I've always, I've always appreciated a band that is really consistent with their music. You know, like maybe they have one song that's just really great, but that doesn't mean the rest of their stuff is shit, too. You know, like to have a band that just produces great things all the way through and through is is really special. I mean, I felt that there's a lot of bands that do that. The most recent one that I felt that way about is Queen. Like not mm-hmm. recent chronologically, of course, but like what I've been listening to. I, I've been listening to a lot of Queen lately. There's that movie that's coming out, based yeah, on... with um with uh, Rami Malik, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, who got a guy from. Uh, I might watch Mr. it. It looks, it looks interesting. You want to go? I'll go. Yeah, I'd watch it. Yeah, I mean, like I'm, I'm all for biopics, man. Like those those things are really cool. Have you you watch any biopics? No, I don't know what that is. Well, I'll send you a bunch of them. Um, in fact. I've had a few questions lined up for like all of us here <laughs> because okay. so, so we still name on me. We, we had, we talked about, you know, what the worst superhero power is. I'd like to hear <laughs> what everyone else thinks is their best worst superpower. I still got the See, superhero. I still, have, I still have normal guy invulnerable feels pain. <laughs> hey, people were saying, um, people have said that, uh, since Wolverines is actually like multiple powers together, like just having the adamantium claws would suck because Apparently, the reason why he's so good with them is since he has his regenerative abilities, yeah. like having his adamantium claws tear through his knuckle skin like all the time doesn't really matter. But <laughs> I think there's a there's an old video on YouTube that was uh, realistic superpowers. And one of them was like, uh, I want superhero powers. And the guy was like, you can only get one superhero power. And he's like, <laughs> all right, well, I want to be like Wolverine. And then the guy asks him, well, which, which of his one? abilities yeah, do you want? Yeah. The, the regenerative powers or the claws? And then his friend is like, claws? dude, claws are way cooler than <laughs> regenerative abilities. Who gives a shit about regenerative abilities? And he's like, yeah, you know what? I'll get the claws. And then it cuts to another scene and he's like, he has the claws out of his hands. He's just like, oh! Oh, he's man. bleeding from his knuckles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought shit. that's like, it's oh man, adamantium Dude, I, claws by themselves. I can't, I can't imagine that having your adamantium claws like rip too doesn't feel good because those are his bones, right? Yeah, they are. Okay, bones. okay, okay. So, okay, so that's our first question <laughs> for anybody who listens. What's your, what's your best? Give worst us your shitty superhero power. Superhero power. And then number two, I had was um was about our conversation topic. Like, how is like um what is what is your best like conversation starter or what is your um, what is your conversation question of choice if you had to ask one now i before you said what are you listening to i really didn't have one i yeah. kind of just for me personally i kind of just generally i still did the whole approach where i kind of tried to probe information out of them and get them to talk so that they can start continuing the conversation instead of just relying on me to do it yeah because i mean nobody likes to bear the brunt of a conversation the conversation flows much more naturally and is more fun for both people involved if 
both people can keep up. And that's actually one of the things that I talked about in uh, one of the top three things that I look for in a girlfriend or in a date because I like people who can hold a conversation. I mean, um, who doesn't, man? Yeah, I, I didn't, I really didn't have an opening statement, but I th- honestly think I'm going to use what are you listening to from Feel now on. Feel free. That's like, great. don't, you don't have to cite me or anything, but like, I, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a date. I'm going to be like, so what are you listening to? Uh, here's a citation source. This is JP uh, Pinalski. I remember. <laughs> uh, sorry. Is that MLA or is that Chicago? Yeah. Because it's, it's I, a, oh, it's APA uh, format. Well, I can't really be seeing you then. Oh, jeez. Um, so yeah, so I mean, that's, it's such a, it's interesting because I, I think that there's lots of conversation starters, but that one has always been a favorite of mine and everyone, if they like it, should use it. And then what is it? We never got to, and then we never got to ask, um, what, what are you listening to now, Aaron? Oh, what am I listening to? Yeah, what is to? your deal now? Um, are you talking about music or other things in general? Well, let's talk about what, what music are you into right now? Um, right now I have been on a huge future funk binge uh for me i think i've already told you before but or i've definitely told you before that i find a lot of my music through youtube yeah um just because it's easy for me to nav. i know this website and it's super easy to find more uh songs and music from a specific artist or a group of artists based because they have everything compressed on their channel and uh it's just really easy if, if i go oh i like this one band or this one song and just look it up on youtube they might post a bunch of their other stuff that i can listen to and it's other, really easy um otherwise i'm subscribed to a bunch of uh, other youtube channels that i guess they're like record labels kind of but they take songs from a whole bunch of other small time artists and just smash them all together and mm-hmm. then they'll put out one a day and i kind of just put the whole playlist on autoplay and then i'll listen to it while i'm doing something else like yeah browsing facebook or something and if i hear a song that i like i go oh i like that um but the genre specifically that i've been liking a lot is uh future funk it's i don't really know how to describe it it's it's funk i i've shown you some of it before oh, um, cool. i'll send you some yeah. more of it later it's oh i don't actually know if it's like u.s produced or if it's mostly u.s people who are producing it or not but what they do is they take a lot of um, samples from Japanese uh, 80s, 70s funk or pop, and they overlay it with um, like their own self-produced beats and backing track. Maybe they'll add some vocals, but they kind of just take a whole bunch of samples from uh, older Japanese songs and then kind of uh, give it a modern flair, kind of like a electro swing. I've told you about that. Oh, dude, that electro, was a, electro, electro swing. Yeah. Like for anyone who doesn't know, like electro swing is, is like fun. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. Look up caravan palace for anyone who's curious about electro swing. It's, it's great stuff. It's like what you would want to listen to in Portillo's. That's what I want. That's what I want. But um, yeah. Future <laughs> I've fun. never thought about it like it, that. Yeah. Well, swing music in general just makes me think of like that setting. Yeah. Um, but future funk. Yeah. It's I, I'm really biased towards music that, is makes me want to dance like well it's very upbeat um often has really great bass lines so that's what i love in music but yeah future funk is kind of what i'm on i'm i'm more of a person who listens to binges on genres than like a specific band like yeah. I, know, I know people who will be like i want to listen to sixpence none the rich wow what an obscure wow, band obscure. to pick um but you just want to listen to kiss me yeah, they, for like a they just want to listen to them for the whole month but i, I can't do that wow a whole month of sixpence that's like two songs oh, me, dude. Jeez. <laughs> i mean you get you get what like there she goes yeah, right right that's and then about it or you smash should, you mouth. should overlay that song <laughs> i went on a smash mouth binge. did you really no <laughs> all they have is uh, All Star and Walking on the Sun. Walking right? on the Sun, and that's really all I know. I uh, have the album. I have the CD, man. There's <laughs> I had the CD back in fun, CDs. For fun Christine. story. They went to go play at one at a corn festival in Urbana, Yeesh. of course. Champaign Urbana is in the middle of nowhere of Illinois, and it's surrounded by a bunch of cornfields. Yeah, and yes, there was a corn festival, but apparently, <laughs> the, the lead singer there got like super drunk or nice. something and then Dude. i think i think he got he passed out um, in the back of the stage or something and had to be taken away by a hospital and i think he got really pissed because i'm pretty sure people at the at the corn festival were like just <laughs> yelling at him and just seeing nothing but all-star <laughs> it's like when, when your whole life becomes a meme strictly because of shrek like out of your control <laughs> No, I, I'd want to be taken away by an ambulance too. I have a friend. Uh, I have a friend, good old Levi Clinton. I love that guy. Um, 
we he was my roommate uh two years ago and um he was telling the story about i think it was his dad had given a ride to the uh, to the the lead singer for smash mouth <laughs> he was he was driving really? ride share and he gave he gave this guy a lift to the concert and then they got to watch but like one of the questions that was posed i think was like how does it feel to be the pen from shrek <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> the band from shrek <laughs> yeah. oh no I'm, Man, I don't. That question hurts me, like to my core. yeah, right. It's you like know, when, secondhand cringe <laughs> you feel for this guy. Have you seen the thing where if the the lead singer for Smash Mouth and Guy Fieri look the same? Like if you gave oh, the no. lead singer uh, oh, frosted no. tips, <gasps> he's he's Guy Fieri. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I love I love a fanfic of, of the loots of Smash Mouth becoming Guy Fieri. It's just been him the entire time I'm, in different projects. I'm almost positive somebody's wrote a fanfic about that already. Jesus. There's no way that that hasn't been a thing already. Wow, that, my life my life's been uh, been enchanted by that. I, I just love knowing that that's a thing. How would you feel? Okay, here's a hypothetical I'm going to throw at you. Okay. You are a one hit wonder. Okay. And that's all you are known for. But you get like crazy money from it. Or would you prefer to be a band that consistently puts out like good songs, but you don't make as much music or money, make as much music, make make as much money as in I make a lot of money, but but I but not as much as my one hit wonder. Yes. If you're a one hit wonder, you make like crazy amounts of money. But if you're just a regular band who keeps producing quality music, mind you, but you're not like a listers. Hmm. Okay. So, so like the artist in me is saying that I want to be that guy that creates like really great music, but it doesn't have great notoriety. But so for so for some context, I recently just watched all of Daniel Craig's Bond movies this week. Ooh, I was in, choice. I was in, um, I was in Idris Alabama. Idris Elba is going to be the new one. I'm excited for yeah. that. Um, I was in Alabama this past uh, this past week. I was our weekend really. I was doing some rehearsals for a tour I'm doing in October. But, um, so, you know, I'd have some downtime and when I was, when I didn't feel like doing any work or or writing something or reading, I would watch, uh, you know, the Bond movies. I'd never seen them before. And so I'm just like, I I might as well watch. And after seeing those, like the, um, Aston Martins that he, that he drives. Oh boy. Oh my God. I, I, I have to go with like, I have to go with the one that allows me to drive these Aston Martins. Okay. Check this out. This is the, this is the one from, um, from Spectre. It's just, it's so hot, you Such know, a nice like it's the, it's the, I think this is, what is it? The DB5 or DB6 or something. Okay. And then this one, which is even, which is really hot as well. Ooh, that's, that's, uh, a, that's a spicy car. It is spicy. It's the DB, the DBS V12 for anyone who wants to look it up. So, so how this ties into the question, <laughs> I'm feeling really material right now. <laughs> and so at this point in time. I think I'm gonna have to go with the the just excessive amounts of money so I can buy both of these cars. Money can buy happiness Mo- to an people, extent. Yeah, the only people who say that money can't buy happiness don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> like unpopular opinion. Well, no, can't change I mean, my change my view. Like if you look at that the the tr- what is it that triangle of well being? You know the thing where it's like at the bottom is food, clothes, oh, you mean and the, um, shelter. Yeah, yeah, that 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 pyramid yeah, of yeah. happiness or whatever. I I mean those three things at the very bottom of the pyramid, which supposedly say is like the baseline for human happiness you kind of need money to do any of those at all what are they food clothing and shelter i think are the bottom like the bottom of the pyramid that's like the absolute lowest thing that humans need to be happy or to be like satisfied and like i mean anything short of a homeless shelter that provides that for you you need money to a buy clothes yeah buy a house and eat food right yeah unless you're somehow producing all three of those by yourself yeah but. And, I, and i guess like if we're saying that you need enough money for that like yeah you do need money to live to do that and live and have happiness which is kind of fucked but like so yeah and some some extent money does buy happiness i guess yeah. What would you do if you were put in that situation? If if I was either the one hit wonder one or the regular wonder, band, one hit wonder or just exceptional regular band, I feel like the one hit wonder would be cool until I somehow become a meme. Like, all, <laughs> it, like you know, Smash it's Mouth. inevitable, man. Like, it's inevitable to become the meme. Well, I mean, like, say the one song that you produce as the one produce. I swear, God, dude, <laughs> and every single 
podcast my voice cracks horribly at least <laughs> once yeah it's it's the it, it's what makes this podcast <laughs> real it's the it's the uh every episode crack of Aaron's voice we're four for four on <laughs> on voice cracks that you know you know it's us and not somebody else yeah. when you hear the voice crack. If, and it, by episode 50 if you listen to all the voice cracks and put them in sequential order it's a secret message <laughs> so, so that just yeah so it's, stay tuned is, yeah this is stay a tuned long for the long secrets to thing. unlock the secrets that we have um but i feel like having the one hit wonder take off and be super popular I feel like since everyone will love that song so much, they inevitably use it into something that I don't want it to be associated with. What, and would, then be, if, what would be your worst nightmare for that? What if for it's that? Track? Would it be no, that would your... be like ISIS uses it during a beheading video. <laughs> and then I get contacted and they're like, are you promoting Boy. terrorism? Oh, man. No, I was like, no, I just made a song 15 years ago and some crazy terrorist organization was like, I don't like the song. Can we kill a guy while the song plays in the background? I mean, they're, I'm, I don't know if people or producers or song artists have any uh, control over that, but you know getting associated with something that but, you don't want to but might you be could, out of your you jurisdiction could also a, you could also land a situation where like your song is the is like it becomes emblematic of like say like a movie like i was just thinking about i like shrek <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. or or like I was thinking about like a like a more like a more pertinent okay. example like like um like Adele's Skyfall. Okay, you know like oh, yeah, okay. that's a, that's a that's and a she's, I mean she's not really a one hit wonder, but like you know say that was the only song that she made. Say, yeah, yeah, but if that was the only song she'd made, you know it's a pretty good song, you mm-hmm. know. And it, and I mean I guess this would inde- it would indefinitely launch a career for her, like yep. you know assuming she hadn't had anything beforehand. But but say like if you if you landed something cool like that. And then, we, then I think that would be cool. But that would be the chance you have to take. Yeah, you have to be prepared to be. But mean. see, I'm thinking of it in also the aspect that if this is a whole band and not just me, I have those other bandmates who are also tagged along with this thing. Yeah. So if that goes to hell, then they're all getting dragged down with it, which probably means they won't like it. But if I was a consistent band member that was just producing things, like you said, like the artist morally high crown part of me <laughs> says. Yeah, it's probably better to be like a band that's consistently good instead and I, and of they I got lucky. Like, if you're if you're if you're like consistently good and you're just make, you're making good money, you know that's great. Yep. You know, like I don't think you need anything more. You go down in history rather than you know for being a good band rather than being a meme. Yeah, I that, think your uh, meme ability like definitely goes down it, like, the more you stay. To <laughs> that's your artistic how I like endeavor. to measure my success. Yeah, is I, I'd like by, to I'd like to start measuring. Meme. I'd like to start measuring things ba- based on their potential meme ability. By that definition, SpongeBob skyrocketed way, way beyond its years. It yeah. has SpongeBob has aftermarket meme potential. No, I think I think <laughs> anybody who was trying to invest in SpongeBob back in the day, like they're seeing the fruits of that just go up exponentially <laughs> yeah. nowadays. All you guys in meme economy, good good job picking your fight correctly <laughs> I, mean, I mean actually really pertinent for the uh for the oh man it would have been good to have uh to have another spongebob thumbnail for this one too i could find something for it maybe i don't know <laughs> or i'll just make one who knows yeah yeah we'll see how the popularity goes with that one if everyone <laughs> likes aaron's uh ms hey i spent more than five minutes drawing episode two's one so it's pretty damn good yeah, everyone i'm proud like, of it so if anything hi I ain't aaron the next for vincent MS van gogh but i'm pretty damn good at copying spongebob <laughs> we're, i'm gonna push this closer to what we're gonna talk about like okay. for the rest of it um have you heard you've heard of um ms bob ross right yeah um, yeah okay okay for everyone who doesn't know uh what's the subreddit called it's like um it's ms paint bob ross r slash ms paint bob ross i'm gonna look up really quickly but the gist of it is people will watch like the joy of painting like on netflix with bob ross and they'll follow all of his stuff but on ms paint <laughs> so you have to like for anyone who doesn't know you've probably seen gifs of bob ross on the internet he's the the painter guy who looks kind of like a hippie and he's got huge fro but he paints that nice little scenery with a river and a small house and some rocks and he talks really nice and it's kind of like asmr it's really it's like if you're looking for something to like fall asleep to really pleasantly or you just need a good pleasant optimistic pick-me-up bob ross on netflix for everyone who everyone who wants to know the name of the subreddit it is r slash ms paint like bob ross 
So sorry we talk about Reddit so much, but it just provides so much good content. How that, can you not? And that leads into today's big topic that we decided on earlier today. Oh my, so, we're already an hour in. So so we'll we'll do, we'll go through the um. Let's go through the best of the best. I'm gonna Aaron. You should pull up this list. So I I I know this is old and that I'm coming under this like a bit late in the game for Reddit at least. But I recently stumbled onto Reddit's Museum of Filth, oh. and for everyone, for everyone I, who doesn't know, I just know, found out about man, this. Reddit's dude. okay. R slash Reddit Museum of Reddit's Museum oh, of Filth. No, it's it's just like an archive, a huge Hold on. anthology. Before uh, it, before you even think about putting that into the search bar, make sure you're not at work or using a work it computer. Is, it, like the NSFW, me, the term to the not mix. safe for work applies almost more than it does anywhere. Yeah. Yes, it now. falls into not safe for life yeah, territory. Yeah. Like, I hope you're listening with like, I hope you're not trying to look this up as we speak. <laughs> um, so, so Reddit's Museum of Filth is just a big anthology of just the worst things that have been oh. shared on Reddit. Um, like, like the first one is the broken arms story. Do you know the broken yeah, arms story? Yeah, I know the broken story. Do you want to go ahead and, and regale I mean, us about I, the broken I haven't read story. the original post about well, it the, for the long time. We just need the gist, though. The, the gist of it is that some kid broke both of his arms, and he still wanted to masturbate, I think, right? Yes. So he didn't have any means to do that since his arms were broken. So his mom decided to help him out with oh, that, God, and then they ended up developing a sexual relationship it, off it's of it. Just, it's just so, like... Thank you, internet. It's just so... You know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, Bad. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, there's something about it that's just so low. It's, like, it makes this, me feel dirty. Like, oh my God. Why? It's, there are, I don't know if it's a real story or not, but there are you, people. You really can't tell, but I, I just, know. it makes me feel like I, I'm just this horrible person like when, knowing when you it. showed me the uh bot fly girl oh, oh god fly girl? before we talk before we talk about that we one gotta, real quick you know <laughs> i <laughs> i can't believe if it's a real story actually no i can believe that there are people who are crazy enough to do this in real life it's i i want to die um do you want me to give a short synopsis about that? Yeah, I, I think. No, I'll, I, I think it'd be good to give. A, I, 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 what I want for this is I want us to explore Reddit's Museum of Filth. Like we're, we're walking through it, we're taking our time. We've got anymore, to. dude. <laughs> it's so, awful. Wait, let's do. We got to do at least a few of them. Okay. It's, it's really quite bad. Pick, 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 <laughs> like, pick let's, one let's that lead, you let's know. lead up. We can lead up to. Uh, we can lead. I up don't to the want a record. Episode. Of my voice reading <laughs> some of the things that are on the list. Let's maybe not read it. Then. it uh, it's pretty. Uh, it, it's pretty heinous. So, so I want to read. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, here's a good one. It's it's pretty tame. I'm gonna read it. <laughs> is this one that I've heard before? And this is. Uh, oh man. Okay, I gotta find the. Uh, so the best part about this this whole thing, this link that I have, is that some of the some of the comments where they tell the story have been removed, and so the guy who's got <laughs> it has backup links. And so like you know, when I feel like going through the backup links, it's just like oh man, I'm really like searching now. This All is right. stuff that belongs on like the dark web. <laughs> just because like it's just so horrendous. I'll all right. This one is called Wednesday the Cat. Okay. And it's pretty short. I'll read all of it. So this is an archived post. And so like it's it's it, the person who posted it isn't present. It's just so that we can read it and for our own pleasure. Pleasure? The, the te- yeah, sure. The text <laughs> goes like, I adore my cat. She's beautiful, affectionate, curious, and has all kinds of cute quirks. She's Uh-oh. perfect. Uh-oh. Living alone, I tend to talk to her quite a bit. And since I work from home, we are almost always together. Uh-oh. Of course, I love my cat. She's the only thing I have resembling family, but over time, things have become more and more abnormal. I find myself thinking of her beauty and her grace and her ability. And <laughs> it's I a cat, dude. Come on. I realize that I love her as more than family. Oh, man. I'd love to watch her bathe. One time I was lying <laughs> in bed, masturbating. She came into the room and bathed herself on the end of the bed. That was the first time I jerked it to my cat. Currently, we both consensually participate in this form of sex. Consensual? Obviously, it's a cat. It's a yeah, man. I don't know. It's just, just it's just depraved. <laughs> okay. Obviously, I can't hook a cat. So the way we do it is, I lay on the bed and shake shake a tin rattle, and she comes in and hops up on the bed and lays on the pillow curled up right next to my face. 
And basically, she purrs, cleans herself while I bury my face in her fur. <laughs> and I'm not going to read the rest of it, but you get it now. <laughs> uh, that was enough of like a thesis statement to build a vivid picture in my mind that I didn't want there at 1.45 a.m. I don't know if this, I'll be able to come to sleep. <laughs> oh, man. This is like the... Um, this is like the scary stories that people tell at their campfires. I'm just going to replace it with like stories from Reddit's Museum of Filth. Do you think that's a possibility for people? Oh, these kind of still fall under horror stories. What if ghost stories got replaced by just like abhorrent, disgusting stories that make you want to vom? That'd make us trendsetters then. Is that a genre? Like What? You know, there's horror, there's comedy, there's romance. Is there like a, disgust. a disgusting category i would want to say that this this flows closely into horror like with the gore factor Ugh. but like i think I there's think gore in this one there's some gore okay in. never mind okay <laughs> we, we'll, we'll read through them <laughs> I, <laughs> this is, <laughs> the, the, the board of trustees on itunes that gave us the okay they're gonna be like you know what first three episodes <laughs> that these guys put up not bad and then they're gonna get to the end of this episode and they're gonna be like what the fuck how did we let these guys on this? itunes yeah oh, yeah man there's i'd like to read some of the some of the titles then if we're not going to get into it <laughs> okay so, so we got jolly rancher uh, oh i've actually read that one land whale miscarriage mm-hmm, you told me about Great. that one uh, colby uh that one's really sad okay you can everyone can like at their own risk go in that <laughs> one let's see um all a bunch of them that have to do with come in some sort of way shape or form okay um let's see when did the cat there's a Doritos one. Mm-hmm. The one that, that got me into this was Dagobah. Like Star Wars I Dagobah? I don't know if you know the story about the swamps of Dagobah. Are we the, talking the, the actual the, canonical the, stories no, no, of I'm Star talking Wars? About, I'm talking about the Reddit uh, legend, the swamps of Dagobah. Mm, That's, that one is, is I'll really... I'll have to look that one up on my own time with yeah, a maybe, VPN and, and on incognito. VPN and <laughs> in, in the daytime. Oh, Not now, when you okay. have the chance of dreaming about it. Ham Beast... Okay. Um, shit fisting potato. Good one. Poop scissors was a good one, actually. Okay, poop wait. scissors. I'd that like sounds to, like an urban I'd dictionary. Like, term. I'd like to give a synopsis of the poop scissors because it's pretty harmless. Okay. Basically, this kid when he was a, this guy when he was a kid, the comment reads, he, he used to like eat a lot of food and not poop for a few days, okay. and then he'd poop and then he'd come out these like these big big logs, right? <laughs> and so of course he would like clog the toilet and his parents would get mad. So he, what he developed was he just picked a pair of scissors and when it come out he'd <laughs> snip it. <laughs> just like he yep, hold, yep. he held it at his butt and just like cut yep, it. Yeah, just snip it. That's like gotta be a pretty big pair of scissors to do that. Pretty hefty pair of scissors. Okay. That was one of the more tame ones. Uh, jungle juice. Oh man. Cottage cheese. Hey, like, like, comment, and subscribe if you use poop scissors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, melon baller. The threadworm butt plug. Oh man. And the blowfly girl. Ugh. That one, that one is just gonna stay blue for like on, for this computer. I don't need it. Blowfly girl. Oh yeah. Oh I, yeah. I didn't read it on this computer. That's stuff that the CIA and NSA will be like, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For anybody who wants to like venture into this, this was like a a tour a tour of disgust for me. And yeah, <laughs> good job tickling people's curiosities into potentially unlocking a side of them that they didn't I'm know saying, was there. Dude, like this this stuff's pretty stuff's pretty heinous. We're 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 one hundred percent giving you a warning that's like, okay, you might want to be mentally prepared for some of this stuff. Yeah, literally the blowfly girl won't leave you for a week. No, like I'm that, gonna be thinking about that, that, that for story a while. Sticks with you and, and I mean like I just want to apologize for that. I, I made you read it today. I'm just yes, like... you did. <laughs> I mean, we originally only wanted we we're gonna talk about shitty superhero powers, but this just just a testament to how good of a conversationalist we are. I right. That's a, that's a topic of this this one. Yeah, I mean, talking was, conversations. I think like I I think that. You know, we we definitely came through a lot of different things with like, you know, the superheroes was such an interesting thing to get into, and then how it divulged into different aspects. It, it, you know, if, if we're gonna make this, uh, if we're gonna make this about conversation, yeah. Here, here you go, listeners. Here's your homework if you want to go back and listen to the whole thing and dissect it through the th- <laughs> through the three uh, cruxes of conversation that I talked uh, about. Professor the, Portante the, coming through. 
the asking a question, making a statement, and answering a question, and see how I, I might do that while I'm in the middle of editing this. I'll go ahead and re-examine our conversation for this podcast and just see like how we were bouncing back the conversation between each other and what of those three cruxes is cruxi cruxes. I think it's, I think it's either cruxes or cruces. Like whatever C-R-U's, cruces, yeah, whatever. each of our banter's back and forth applied to. You know, and and I in my infinite anxiety will think about those things and how I speak through the night while I try and sleep. (laughs) Well, if you want to call it quits for that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good place. You said last time you wanted to make a sign off. Yes, I do want to make a sign off. What do you want it to be? You know, can't really think of anything. We should make, should we make our, I mean, right now I have like an intro and outro music sequence. Yeah. But do you think somewhere down the line we can, we should make our own thing? Yeah, I definitely think we should. You know, like, I like the idea of making our own little intro because we can. Like a little man. jingle? Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, we, we're, you're, you're the musician. Yeah, we've got we musicians do, here. We've got, we've got Peter coming yeah. in at some point. No, we could definitely yeah. like, record something. <laughs> Two voice cracks. <laughs> Two in one. You're welcome, everyone. There will be more. No, no we, we should definitely do that. I think we de- like, I definitely want to think of a sign-off, though. Um, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Bye. <laughs> that's what we, that's what we did for the last one. Even the last time I said I like to end it spontaneously.